Hey guys, and welcome back to the Spruce and Linen channel. I'm Janelle, and today we're going to talk about how to warp a frame loom. So this is really a tutorial for those of you who are just starting out weaving, maybe you've never woven on a frame loom or really seen anything about how it's done. So we're just gonna jump right in. This video is brought to you by the Spruce and Linen shop where you can find weaving looms, kits, tools, and supplies. Link in the description box below. In front of me, I have a very simple frame loom. This is our Spruce and Linen loom. It has a notch bar on both the top and the bottom. This is very common for a frame loom, but you might also see them with pegs, but the warping is pretty much the same regardless. So for my warp string, I'm going to be using the cotton black warp string that I carry in my shop. So if you wanna check that out, I'll put a link in the description box below for you. I always recommend for a warp string to be something that isn't very stretchy. Now, there is an exception to this rule depending on what you are creating. So if you have seen our plaid weaving tutorial, I'll put a link here. It is done with just the regular yarn that I was weaving with as the warp but this is for a very specific purpose. For the most part, when it comes to woven wall hangings, I'm going to be using something like this cotton that is, again, very strong and it's not stretchy. It has very little stretch to it. This is just going to be a stronger foundation for a woven wall hanging, especially when you're talking really large ones. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is just simply tie an overhand knot, creating a loop just big enough that it'll fit over whatever notch you are dealing with. Then you're just going to take that loop, put it around whatever peg you're going to start with. So something I like to do is decide beforehand, obviously, what width that you're wanting to weave. And then you can kind of mark center on your loom and figure out how many notches on each side to get your piece centered on the loom. That's my personal preference. You don't have to do that. I just like it when it feels when I'm weaving like my piece is in the center. So here I'm starting on the fourth notch in, and then I'm going up to the fourth notch on the top as well. And I'm just going around the notch, not the whole loom. So one mistake I have seen a few times is when you're warping like this and you're going all the way around the loom. You don't need to do that. So the only time I've really seen that done with a frame loom weaving is if you're actually weaving on a picture frame that doesn't have notches, um, I would say just put notches on it or, or pegs. That's gonna make your life a lot easier. So we're just going around the notch and we're coming back down. Now this is called a single warp. So that means we're only putting one string between each notch. And I will quickly show you a double warp as well. So as far as tension goes, this is something you're gonna have to play with. And again, it does depend on what it is that you're weaving, but you don't want to, hopefully I can demonstrate this and you can really see what I mean. But if I'm not gonna be like reaming on this string and stretching it super, super tight. You don't need to have it that tight, but you also don't want it super loose. It's kind of one of those not too tight, not too loose, somewhere in the middle. So I just try to keep an even tension as I'm holding the string. I like to kind of put my finger underneath the notch as I'm wrapping it around to hold the tension. And then I'm just gonna come up and around, going one notch at a time. And then just continuing that for the entirety of whatever the width you're wanting is. So now that I've shown you what a single warp looks like, I'm gonna do a few rows of double warp just so you can see the difference. And then we're gonna go back to the single warp. I'm gonna show you how to make sure your warp is nice and even as well. So for a double warp, it's just as it sounds. We're going to be putting two strings between each notch. So instead of for my single warp, I would come here. I'm going to go back in, in between those notches and around the next one. And then same on the bottom. So this is going to give you double the amount of warp strings on your loom, which is why it's called a double warp. And the reason you would use this is if you are using thinner yarn, so like a medium weight yarn and you're wanting to use like one strand at a time and to get more detail in your piece because the more ends per inch, the more detail you can get. It's kind of like pixels, like a photo. So the more pixels you have, 
you know, the more intricate that image can be. It's the same thing with weaving. If you have more strings, you can get more detail. So that's a double warp. I'm going to go back to my single warp so that we can finish it off and we can talk about evening out your warp. So you're just gonna continue that same process all the way across. Depending on what you are weaving will depend on whether or not you want an odd amount of warp strings or an even amount of warp strings. Now, if you're just getting started, I would suggest just keeping with an even amount um, just to get started. But sometimes you're gonna want an odd amount of warp strings. This will come into play mostly when you're doing things like a diamond twill pattern to make sure that your pattern is symmetrical on your piece. You'll need an odd amount of warp strings. I will put a link to our um, diamond twill tutorial, the first one. So we have one that's a single color, one that's a double color. The single color one is going to give you all the information that you need if you've never done a twill pattern before. Okay, so we're going to just do this as an even amount of warp string. So I'm going to finish off on this notch here and because I'm using a loom where the notches are pointing down, so you'll see a few different styles of frame looms. Sometimes the notches are pointing out and sometimes they are pointing up and down. So in this case, when they're pointing down, I'm going to just cut myself a tail and trying to keep this tension, I'm going to just tie a knot and sometimes this works really well, sometimes you lose a bit of that tension, but we can fix it later. And I don't love this style of knot just in case it slips. So just make sure you tie it nice and snug. And then sometimes I'll also do it just like a triple knot just to make sure it all stays in place. Now, if you are working with a loom where the notches are pointing out, what you can do instead of what I just did here is you can finish it off the same way we started it. So in that case, what you would do is let's say you're finishing on this knot, I would figure out what I need, give myself a tiny bit more and just do another overhead knot with a loop and put it on the loom. But that doesn't really work as well when your notches are pointing up and down because it's going to make that last string super, super tight. So just do it the way that I showed you here. And now what we're going to do is, I've got to roll up my sleeves for this. Um, we're going to just kind of feel, feel the warp if you will, strum it with your hands. See, when I do this, can you see how, like watch this last string, it's so loose, it's, it's way too loose. So this, what we're going to do now is try to even out the tension. Like ideally, yes, you warp your loom, <laughs> the tension is perfect and everything just stays perfectly in place. That doesn't always happen. I'm always adjusting my warp um, before I start weaving and that's totally fine and normal especially when you're tying it off the way I just did. So because I can see here, like there's a few loose strings here, then we're a little tighter in this section and then we're really loose here. So what I'm gonna do is try to even that out. So simply in the same direction that you warped the loom, I'm going to start adjusting the strings just slightly. Um, it does not need to be perfect, let me tell you. I've had some very imperfect um, warps before on a woven wall hanging and it still works, but I would just say take the time to try to even it out because it is going to make sure that your piece stays a lot more square once it's off the loom. So I'm literally just going to, so I'm pulling up here, pulling down on this string and then I'm just literally trying to like shift over some of that slack towards the middle where I know the strings are a lot tighter. And then I'm gonna just try to taper off. So now this section is feeling a lot more even. Again, like I said, doesn't need to be perfect. We just want it so that there's not some strings that are super, super tight and some are super loose. So this one is super loose. So I need to start pulling, I need to get that one a little tighter. And I'm gonna start pulling these ones also to the center where I know, again, that the strings were a little bit tight. 
Okay, that's feeling a lot better. Again, not perfect, doesn't need to be. All right, you guys, so that is how to warp a frame loom, and now you are ready to get started weaving. If you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe, and click the bell to get notifications when I post new videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.